So there's lots of places to take a closer look at the metamorphic rocks in Big Thompson Canyon. But this is a good outcrop because we can see a lot of the typical characteristics that define this rock type. Remember, metamorphic rocks are rocks that have recrystallized due to high pressure and temperature. And we typically find those high temperature and pressure conditions in the mid to lower crustal regions of mountain belts. And remember, mountain belts are formed often through plate tectonic collision. So as plates come and collide, the crust crumples, thickens, and that uplifts mountains. And it's the great depth which causes the high heat and pressure leading to the recrystallization. And that's true for these rocks as well. So at 1.7 billion years ago, when these rocks were being metamorphosed, they were in the mid to lower crust of a large mountain belt, which has since eroded away. And the only evidence for that mountain belt that results, uh, that was produced, is these metamorphic rocks and the igneous rocks associated with them. Of course, any metamorphic rock has what we call a protolith, or a parent rock. What was the rock before it was recrystallized due to that high heat and pressure to become a metamorphic rock? And in the case of these rocks, they were sedimentary rocks. So at about 1.75 billion years ago, there was an ocean in this part of Colorado. And in that ocean, shales and sandstones were being deposited. And those shales and sandstones were then metamorphosed to the rocks that we see here. So sandstones, if you remember, they get metamorphosed to quartzites. And so this is one of these quartzite layers that we see here. Shales, depending on the metamorphic conditions, can be metamorphosed to uh, a slate, a phyllite, a schist, or a gneiss. And here, it's been metamorphosed to a schist. And we call it a schist. These are good schist layers, interlayered with the quartzite layers. And it's a schist because we can see the muscovite, biotite, locally garnet, and there's other metamorphic minerals here as well, such as starlite and andalusite. The next thing I want to discuss at this outcrop is that why do we see these transitions between quartzite to schist, quartzite to schist, repeatedly? And why are they dipping in this orientation that we see here? Well, the transition between quartzite and schist, quartzite and schist, is actually uh, a result of the original bedding and interlayering of that quartz sandstone and shale in that shallow in the ocean at about 1.75 billion years ago. So when these rocks were metamorphosed, the difference in protolith from layer to layer is now preserved as the diff what we see now, the change between quartzite and schist, quartzite and schist. And that originally in the ocean was sandstone to shale, sandstone to shale. But now let's consider the orientation of these rocks. You remember sedimentary rocks, when they're deposited, often have horizontal layers, which we call bedding. And that makes sense because the sediment are being deposited out of that ocean water onto the bottom of the ocean, and it's done in a horizontal fashion. Well, when plates collide to build these mountain belts, to drive these rocks to great depth, to cause the recrystallization and metamorphism, when those plates collide, the rocks are going to become deformed. Deformation can take those flat-lying rocks and tilt them. And in the case of these rocks, they've been folded. So we're on a limb of a fold. And because of the ruggedness of the terrain, the complexity of these rocks, we're either there are both synclines and anticlines. And if you remember a syncline, is rocks that are shaped like a smile, like this, and an anticline is a rocks that have been shaped into an arch this way. And you can see if I shorten my hand, 
which could happen through plate tectonic collisions to rocks, I shorten the hand. It can be folded into an anticline, but it can also happen here. If I shorten my hand this way, it can be folded into a syncline. So for these rocks, we could be looking at a limb of a syncline here, or on a limb of an anticline here.